All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to use standard deviation. I say today, I mean really in this video. Um, so we talked about last time how standard deviation was calculated, how we can use our calculator to get standard deviation. And so what we're going to do now is talk about um, what what the standard deviation can tell us specifically about how spread or not just how about how spread out the data is but then how can we use that to um, gain some results the first idea that we're going to see is what's called Chebyshev's theorem now Chebyshev was a Russian mathematician this theorem is named after him and it says that the proportion of values from a data set that will fall within k standard deviations of the mean will be at least 1 minus 1 over k squared. Now, k can be any number. Um, I will say k needs to be something bigger than 1. Otherwise, that 1 minus 1 over k squared becomes negative, and it doesn't make sense anymore. But the idea is that this thing is telling me me that at least a certain percent of my data falls within a certain range and that range is associated with the standard deviations and uh, the size of the standard deviations so the phrase that we're going to be concerned with is the phrase within k standard deviations so what's that mean well, let's take an example here, and let's say our average is 10 and our standard deviation is 3. So again, mu equals 10 and sigma equals 3. Now, if I go one standard deviation smaller than my average, basically that means I start at 10 and go one standard deviation smaller that goes left 3 units. So one standard deviation smaller than the average is 7. And one standard deviation more than the average is 13. So I take my 10, add 3 to that, and I get 13. So within one standard deviation um, is implying that we are between 7 and 13. Notice that we're saying within one standard deviation of the average okay is between 7 and 13 so I do have to go one standard deviation step to the left and go one standard deviation step to the right now within two standard deviations I'd start at 10 and I would go two steps to the left in other words I'd go three and then another three so I'd subtract a total of six and be at four standard deviations and if I went the opposite way, I started at 10, and I added one, two jumps, that'd be adding a total of six, we'd be at 16. Many times it helps to like draw, try to draw a picture and try to do that. Um, I'm going to not draw it right now, but I will draw it in, uh, or attempt to draw in just a minute here. And then obviously within three standard deviations is between 1 and 19. Three standard deviations, each a jump of size 3, means I need to go 9 to the left and 9 to the right of the mean. So that leads me to numbers 1 and 19. Now here's how we're going to actually use Chebyshev's theorem. It's going to, we're going to start with a scenario that says something like the average score on a test is 80 points, and this test has a standard deviation of 5 points. And Chebyshev's theorem is going to say, well, what percentage of people have scores between 70 and 90? So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to draw a number line that sort of right in the middle is 80. All right, so that's what I did. I took a, a number line, and this is a really rough 
draft of a number line, and I created a one end being 70, one end being 90, and the middle is 80. Now again, this uh, you might want to make a little bit longer or shorter if you wanted to, but the point still holds. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 80 right here in the middle, and we're going to figure out how many standard deviations it takes to go from 80 to 70, and how many standard deviations it takes us to go from 80 to 90. So basically, you can do this um, intuitively by just thinking, well, standard deviations are jumps of five. So if I go back over one jump, I get to 75, and I go another jump, I get to 80. So I had two jumps to get back down to 70. I could go to up to 90 in the same way. That's a bad one, but that's all right. Um, go up one jump, up a second jump, all right? So there's two jumps to 70 and two jumps to 90. Now, this is the idea of being within two standard deviations of the mean, all right? So within two standard deviations of the mean is the same as between 70 and 90, because 70, we just saw, is two standard deviation jumps to the left, and 90 is two standard deviation jumps to the right, okay? Now, in just a moment, I'm going to do something, um, I'll do a formal I'll take a formal look at it and uh, show you, well, what if we don't have nice jumps? In this case, our standard deviation was 5, so it's pretty easy to see that two jumps to the left gets you to 70, and two jumps to the right gets you to the 90, okay? All right, so within two standard deviations of the mean is, is the same thing as being between 70 and 90. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, what percentage of people must have scores between 70 to 90? We know 70 to 90 is within two standard deviations of the mean. So we scroll back to Chebyshev's theorem, and it says, well, it's going to be at least 1 minus 1 over k squared. So what we do is we say, okay, 1 minus 1 over k squared is within k standard deviations of the mean. So, what I would do is I'd take 1 minus 1 over k squared. And we know that k in this case has to be 2 because we're within k standard deviations of the mean, and our example is within 2 standard deviations of the mean. So 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. And that's something I can just plug into my calculator. If you do that, if you plug that into your calculator, 1 minus 1 over 2 squared, you get a 0.75. Now here's where we have to pay really close attention to Chebyshev's theorem. Notice the phrasing that it said. It said the proportion of values from a data set will fall within that fall will fall within k standard deviations of the means. So that 0.75 that we just found is a proportion. Now how do proportions relate to percentages? Well it's fairly straightforward. A proportion is just the decimal version of a percent. So in our example that 0.75 would translate into 75%. So as far as the answer goes, we would say at least 75% of the data falls between the values of 70 and 90. Whoops. <laughs> 
So on this test, what we're saying is at least 75% of the people who take this test score between 70 and 90. Now, I do want to just uh, focus our attention to this word at least. It is a very important um, term. At least 75% means it's 75% or higher. So Shebyshev's theorem famously gives us sort of minimum bounds. At least 75% of our data has to fall between those two numbers. Okay? And again, think about how powerful that is for a large group. You're saying 75% of that group falls within this range. And it might be even more. It might be 80%. It might be 90%. Who knows? It might be even 95%. But we know at minimum it's going to be 75%. So knowing um, statistics like that can help us project and figure out, you know, sort of where people will come in at. All right? And again, at least 75% between 70 and 90. Now, one of the things that's really nice about Chebyshev's theorem is that we don't care what the distribution shape is. We talked about distribution shapes at the beginning of the last video. The shape of the distribution doesn't matter here, doesn't apply. No matter what the shape looked like, at least 75% of the data had to fall between 70 and 90, okay? So the Chebyshev's distribution works no matter what shape. In other words, if you, draw a, if you had drawn a histogram right above our number line, no matter how you would have drawn it, as long as your standard deviation is 5, we know at least 75% of the data has to fall between 70 and 90. So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to take a look at the next example. We're still going to stick with the same average and standard deviation, but now we're going to say what percentage of people must have scores between 55 and 105. So take, take a minute of a break and try to figure out what percent of people score between 55 and 105. Pause the video and then we'll start back up in about five seconds. All right, so here's the deal. 55 and 105. We're going to treat this just like we did before. We're going to say, well, since we have the same mean and same standard deviation, we go 55, that's sort of the left-hand most value, and 105. Now, one thing I want to mention is that you could very easily count jumps like I did last time. You go, okay, 80 to 55, how many jumps is that? But there is an official way of doing this. So the official way of doing this is just saying, well, What's the difference between 55 and 80? And then, if you remember, our standard deviation was size 5. So, if we were going to actually do this and we had ugly numbers, we can still just plug this into our calculator and say, well, 55 to 80, that is negative 25 units away since each standard deviation is 5 units, that means that the amount of standard deviations going from 80 to 55 is 5 to the left. Notice that we got a negative here. I got a negative because we went to the left. So what we're saying there is 55 is 5 units 
or excuse me, five standard deviations to the left of 80. And if we would have done another, the other side, so we go 105 down to 80, that is a total of 25 units. Each standard deviation is 5 units. So that means we are 5 standard deviations to the right. So 80 to 105 is a jump of 5 standard deviations. 80 to 55 is a jump of 5 standard deviations. The positive and negative tell you whether to go right or left on the number line. So what does that mean? Five standard deviations to the right, five standard deviations to the, to the left. That means we are within five standard deviations of the mean um, when we're between 55 and 105. So we turn back to Chebyshev's theorem, and Chebyshev's theorem says, well, at least 1 minus 1 over k squared is the proportion of data that's within k standard deviation, uh, excuse me, stay k standard deviations of the mean. And so in our case, we get 1 minus 1 over 5 squared. And if I calculate that, I got a 0.96. All right, so when I punch that into my calculator, I got 0.96. Now, what's this tell us? This tells us that at least 96% of the data falls between 55 and 105. And that's it. Okay, obviously it could be more, but it's definitely not going to be less. So it's going to be 96% or more of the data falls between 55 and 105. And again, that's a very powerful tool to state where 96% of a group has to be um, located numerically speaking. So that's what Chebyshev does. Now, by the way, here we've done a couple of things. We've gone even numbers. We've gone nice numbers to deal with. All right. The next example asks us to say, well, what percentage of people must score between 54 and 92? All right. So these jumps aren't going to be nearly as uh, clean. They're not going to be whole number jumps in terms of number of standard deviations that we go from 80. So if I go from 80 to 54, I don't get there in clean jumps of five units. Similarly, from 80 to 92, I don't get there in clean jumps of five units. So that's why the, that little uh, handy formula is so nice. It's that we can always figure that out no matter what numbers we use. So let's actually go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to copy all the steps that we did before and then paste those into here. Now, if you remember, it says what percentage score between 54 and 92? 92 is going to be actually a little bit closer to 80 then 54 will be, all right? Check this out. So if we start at 54 and we say, okay, how many units is 54 away from 80? 54 is 26 units to the left of 80. If I take 26 units and say, well, each standard deviation is five units, that gives me 5.2 standard deviations to the left. So 54 is 5.2 standard deviations to the left of my average. 
Now, 92, if I go from 92 down to 80, that's a total of 12 units. Each standard deviation jump is 5 units. So 12 divided by 5 means that 92 is 2.4 units away from 80. Now, this is the first one in which these two numbers did not match up, OK? One of, on one side, we have a negative 5.2. And on the other side, we have a 2.4. And so a lot of people get thrown off by this. They'll say, well, how many units, how many standard deviations of the mean are we within? And I've seen, again, there's a lot of ways to do it wrong. The way to do this correctly is to use the smallest number in terms of absolute value. In other words, the one that's closest to 80. So we see that 80 is closest to 92. That's 2.4 standard deviations. And so we're going to say we're within 2.4 standard deviations of the mean. That, now, real quick, You say, well, we, don't, we didn't do anything with the negative 5.2. And that's correct. The reason why we have to use the smaller number is the same reason that I mentioned earlier why we have to use at least, is because we don't know the shape of the distribution. And if this were a right skewed data, data set, so our tail was to the right, then there would be a lot of stuff between 54 and 80. If this were a left skewed data set, there wouldn't be a whole lot here. The tail would be on the left. And so because we don't know the shape of the distribution, we have to use the smallest number. Now, by the way, it doesn't matter that this is a decimal. It doesn't matter that 2.4 is not a nice whole number. That uh, actually doesn't throw us off by anything. So we just, we're just going to take our standard formula, 1 minus 1 over k squared. And in for our k, we're going to plug in 2.4. And we're going to get 1 minus 1 over 2.4 squared. When I calculated that, I got a little bit nastier decimal, but it's still fine to deal with, 0.82. 6, 4, if I rounded that to four decimal places. Now, I don't know if you remember me mentioning earlier, but I said in this class, almost always we're around to two decimal places unless we're dealing with proportions. This is a proportion. And the reason I want to round proportions to more decimal places, specifically one of the reasons I want to round it to four decimal places, is that when we translate from a proportion to a percentage, well, how is this going to look? We're going to say at least 82.64% of the data falls between 54 and 92. All right. So the reason I like to round four, excuse me, round two four decimal places in when dealing with proportions is because that when we round it to a percentage, then the percentage is rounded to two decimal places. So that's why we go out to four with proportions. In this class, again, it's always going to be four with proportions or two with about anything else. Okay, There's going to be some exceptions to that, but that's the way it goes. So hopefully all that made sense in, in the idea that is what, she, those are the things that Chebyshev's rule or Chebyshev's theorem can help you answer, okay? Now, the next
rule is a rule that just applies to normal or bell-shaped distributions. And it's called the empirical rule. And it says, well, obviously, if the distribution, if we don't know how it's shaped, then we have to go back to Chebyshev's. But if we know that it's shaped in sort of the nicest way possible, so this is sort of the other end of the spectrum. Chebyshev's mean could have really, really crazy shape distributions. But as far as the empirical rule goes, we are saying it has to have this really nice shape. If our data has this really nice shape, then we know that right about, so approximately, 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation of the average. About 95% of the data falls within two standard deviations of the average. And about 99.7% of the data falls within three standard deviations of the average. Notice that we're getting really close to 100% of the data within three standard deviations of the average. So if I have a nice, normal, bell-shaped distribution, then I have these three numbers. Now, there are some drawbacks to this. Notice that right now, the only numbers that we can deal with are within one, within two, or within three standard deviations of the data. So that's one of the drawbacks of the empirical rule. I'll show you, well, once we get into dealing more and more with the bell-shaped curve with the normal distribution, um, we'll see that we can actually get roughly any number that we want to, to and we can get an approximate. So while it has drawback right now that we're only dealing with 1, 2, and 3, the advantages of this are twofold. One is we know that it's normal, so we can take advantage of the fact that a normal curve is symmetric. And two, we don't need to use the phrase at least anymore. Approximately 68% fall within one standard deviation. That's not that's not at least 68. That's not at most 68. That's right about 68%. Okay? So give or take one percentage point, we're getting 68% of the data falling within one standard deviation. So let's do an example here which deals in the empirical rule. All right? So assume I have a normal distribution, and we're going to stick with the same average and the same standard deviation we had last time. So for right now, we're going to say, well, if the average score on the test is 80 points and the standard deviation is 5, what percentage must have had scores between 70 and 90? So, let's go back to our example. We go 70 out to 90. We did this exact same numbers before, but I just want to show you that with doing this calculation, 70 to 80. is 10 units to the left. Each standard deviation is a jump of size 5. So 70 is two standard deviations to the left of 80. 90, 10 units to the right of 80, which means it is two standard deviations to the right of 80. Now, this is within, therefore, two standard deviations of the mean. So between 70 and 90 is within two standard deviations of the mean. We don't have to use any formulas on this one. We can erase this, and we can take a look. 
remember our empirical rule, or at least try to remember our empirical rule. Our empirical rule said, oh, within two standard deviations of the mean, that's approximately 95%. So here there's no calculations, no, or excuse me, no calculations, at least at this point. It's just a straight fact, approximately 98% of the data falls within two standard deviations. Now again, approximately 95% of the data would have to fall between 70 and 90. By the way, if you remember what we did earlier, our very first example of Chebyshev's was 70 to 90, and we said at least 75% has to fall between 70 and 90. Notice that is not a contradiction. We said, oh yeah, it could have been more than 75%. And here we say, well, if it's sort of the, like the nicest shape ever, which is the normal distribution, the bell-shaped distribution, then we can narrow it down to approximately 95%. All right. And by the way, when it, when it says approximately, it means approximately. If, you're, if your curve is actually bell-shaped, it's going to be right at, or very close to, 95% of the data falling between those two numbers. All right. So if we have a bell-shaped curve, then we can use the empirical rule, and we can figure out percentage of scores between this and that. I'd like you to do this one on your own. So if you would, use the empirical rule to do this problem. Pause the video now, and in about five seconds, I'll pick back up. All right, so same, same route we just did. We want to find between 75 and 85. So what I do is I take my scratch paper and I go with 75 as my lowest value, 85 as my highest value, and 75 is one standard deviation to the left, 85 is one standard deviation to the right. So we are within one standard deviation of the mean. And that means that since this data was normally distributed, approximately 68% of the data has to fall between 75 and 85. Okay. So that's the uh, that's how we do that. Okay, one of the things again I'll I'll mention the empirical work rule works really nicely when we have whole numbers. It does not deal with decimals. We'll deal with those in a later um, section, not of chapter two, but down for the uh, down the line when we talk about the normal distribution at more length. So it, the empirical rule does not hand, handle decimals very well. However, it will handle things that maybe aren't evenly spaced out between 80. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about there. So. Let's take a look at the next example, example three. It says, what percentage of the data must have scores between 80 and 95? Now, we are assuming we have a normal distribution. We're assuming that we have the bell-shaped curve, and we're still assuming that 80 is my average, 
and that 5 is my standard deviation. So what we take a look at it's saying what percentage of the data has scores between 80 and 95. Now if we did not have the normal distribution to deal with we would be in a world of hurt here. Chebyshev's theorem would say, well, use the minimum. And think about this. If you use the how far away is 80 from the average, well, it's zero, which means it's zero standard deviations away from the average. Chebyshev's theorem would have gone bonkers. It would have said, well, I can't divide by zero. It's going to all kinds of crazy stuff. However, with the empirical rule, I can deal with this. I can say, well, 80 is obviously zero standard deviations away from the average, but 95 we know is three standard deviations to the right of the average. Okay. Now, how does that help me? Well, that helps me because my curve is symmetric. I'm going to try to freehand a normal curve, but hopefully this doesn't uh, get thrown off too much. So a normal curve, a bell-shaped curve, goes up into the middle, and then it goes back down, and then there's a tail on the right and a tail on the left. And one really, really nice thing about a normal curve is that right here in the middle is my average. Now if I had drawn this perfect, what you would have seen is that this middle line here is the line of symmetry of the normal curve, meaning to the right hand side of the line is the exact same is the mirror image of the left hand side of that line. So let's take a look at 95. Well, 95, we just said, I'm going to draw it right here, is three standard deviations away. So if I were to look at the other side, there's somewhere over here, over on the left, that's also three standard deviations of the way, away. And if I took a look at the entire percentage of values under this curve, so in the entire percentage of values under this curve, three standard deviations means that ninety nine point seven percent of the data falls between those two numbers notice I don't even know I don't even care if you know what that number is I just have to know that from this point from this line over to that line ninety nine point seven percent of the data exists so ninety nine point seven percent of the data let me uh, try to Freehand that, 99.7. All right. So the total area in the green is 99.7. But we really don't want to figure out the total area in the green. What we want to do is we want to isolate just the right half of this. This just this side all the way out to 95, right? All this stuff. And because this line is the line of symmetry, all we have to do is say, well, this blue area is half of the green area. And that's it. 
once we do that, we can say, oh, between um, 95 is three standard deviations away from the mean. within three standard deviations is 99.7%. We only have half of that. So we only have half of that. And again, if you remember back to the drawing, um, that drawing, the percentage was the area under the curve. OK? So all you have to do is take 99.7, divide that by 2, and it turns out that approximately 49.85%, 49.85%, percent of the data must fall between 80 and 95 okay now again we can only do that when we have symmetry so we can only do that on the empirical rule with Chebyshev's theorem we couldn't do that because we didn't know if it was right skewed left skewed maybe there's some weird gaps in the data who knows the empirical rule gives a symmetry Unless I have symmetry, I can't do that trick. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to try utilize symmetry to figure out what percentage of people must have scores below 70. So below 70 just means from like negative infinity up to 70. So go ahead. Again, pause this video, I'll wait about five seconds, and then we'll pick back up. All right, so we're looking at what percentage of people must have scores below 70. So if we go to our scratch paper, oops. 70, let's pretend it's right there. We go from 70 down to 80. We know that's 10 units to the left. So that is two standard deviations. So we say, well, 70 is two standard deviations away from the mean. We know that within two standard deviations, approximately two standard deviations. Well, look back on the empirical rule approximately 95% of the data must live within two standard deviations of the mean. Now, this one was unique, and it said it didn't ask for the percentage between 70 and 80. It said, what's the percentage below 70? So to the left of 70. I think this is, again, probably best done by drawing. So let me take a tried an attempt again another attempt at drawing a normal curve not bad and say okay here's what's happening we have the line of symmetry right here at the average within two standard deviations about 95 percent of the data so if i were to shade that in this blue area here 
in the middle, that is 95% of the data. All right. We didn't want the middle part. What we wanted was this part. Well, let me do that in a different color. Excuse me. Let's take, let's go red. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to find the part that was below 70. Okay, in that red. Now, I've filled in almost all of the sections. Let me just fill in the very last section. I'll fill that in or I'll shade that in in green. So hopefully you can see the colors, but if you can't, we have this portion that is to the left of 70. We have this proportion that's to the right of this number. By the way, that number would have been 90. So we have proportion to the right over here, the, the tail proportion to the left. So we have two tails, and then we have a middle. We know the middle is 95%. The other thing we know is that we have symmetry, which means each of our tails has to be the same size. So within two standard deviations is 95% of the data. So what's going to be over here? What's going to be over here? Well, 5% in total is left off. The, the amount that's below 70 has to be the same as the amount that's above 90. And so that means that essentially 2.5% has to be below 70 and about 2.5 has to be above this number, again, which is 90. So we see there that in order to add up to 100 and in order to keep maintain symmetry, that about 2.5% has to be below 70. And that's it. 95% of the data um, is within two standard deviations. Whoops. 5% is left on either tail. So 2.5% is in one tail, specifically below 70. All right. So our answer would be that approximately two and a half percent of the data falls below 70. Hopefully that worked out for you and that you uh, came up with that answer. Hopefully you've uh, seen how this works and look through this. The one thing I do want to say is that all of my examples in this um, in this section have always had a standard deviation of five and an average, excuse me, and an average which was 80, 80. But clearly we can do this with our average being any number and our standard deviation being any number. And they can be really ugly numbers too. They can have, you know, the average could be um, 42.83 with a standard deviation of 16.72. And we could do the exact same calculations even with sort of ugly numbers. But what that's gonna do is that's gonna draw an end to this video. I'm going to start another video and end that other video, or I should say, end the section 2.2 of the notes with the last video, which will be on measures of position.